floss tube. It's Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. I'm back for my second video. I just want to thank everyone that watched my video and gave me thumbs up and subscribed and left comments. It was very nice. Um, it's very fun to participate in floss tube and to get feedback from people um, that either I've watched their floss tube videos or I've seen them on Stitch Mania or some Facebook group. So it's kind of fun to become connected to the community a little more. Um, uh, also, I want to thank those of you that visited my Etsy store after viewing my um, video. That means a lot to me. I know there are a lot of uh, Etsy stores and online um, needlework stores, so it, it's really nice for you to visit my store and um, give some traffic and some purchases, too. I really appreciate that. Um, with that said, I will be out of town. I have um, a conference and a meeting that I'm going to over the next week and a half, so I'm going to have to put my Etsy store on vacation mode from the 23rd until June 2nd, um, just because I won't be at home, and um, my husband isn't familiar with the product, so he's not going to be able to pack and ship materials, and my son, who I would ask to do it, is actually going with me on this um, on this trip. He graduated from college, so this is his last chance to just travel, because we're already on him about getting a job. We've made him apply for many jobs already, so poor thing. This is his last chance to travel and sort of not be an adult. So he's going with me. Um, but I will be back on the 3rd, 2nd, June 2nd, and um, open my shop back up. Um, I've, got, I've posted several new things, and, um, you know, again, if there's anything you need, just let me know. With that said, let's move on to the stitching. So what I'm going to share with you today are... Um, several different projects. I'm going to go over my Stitch Mania because I participated in Stitch Mania this year and I'm also going to show some of my current whips that aren't Stitch Mania as well as some of my finishes um, whether it's uh, just a completed project or fully finished FFA. Um, and then over time I'll go through these baskets of whips that I have. I'm like at 119 whips right now. Thank you Katie. The stash queen and Sherry Burkett, you've been my influence on letting, you know, it's okay to have that many stars. So um, with that said, let's start with the stitch mania. So I'm going to be looking down because I've got everything written on a little notebook. I got this at Walmart. It's a clipboard with a notebook in it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, but this is how I have all my information. So what I did is I kind of used Brittany from um, Ingleside Imaginarium's idea is I started with a list of my projects from 2016. So I did 14 stars. And then I went through and wrote down if I completed those. And if I completed those, this year I get a new start. If I didn't complete it, then this year I work on that whip. So here's my 2017 where I have all of my new starts and which projects are carryovers. So with that said, Let's go ahead and look at my project. So first day, day, May 1st, was a new start, and I worked on Button Button by Brenda Gervais. This was a 2015 release, I believe. I know I got it at market um, when I was there with Teresa, and I was able to see the model. It was so pretty. Um, and it's stitched with the over -dyed threads, including Valdani. And this is the first time I've used Valdani, threads and I had before I stitched this I'd listened to Emily talk about the Valdani on one of her floss tubes and she was talking about how it frayed and I don't know if it was just because I heard her but I noticed the same thing so I used shorter lengths but that's as far as I've gotten which isn't too bad because I only spend about 30 minutes to an hour on the on the stitch mania I watch you know a floss tube or two as I'm stitching but um I got that far. This is 36 count lakeside linen. I think it is um, vintage exemplar. I know it's not light exemplar, but I'm not sure. I'm not really good about writing down all of the fabric colors. So that was day one. On May 2nd, I had a new start that was influenced by Bindi Stitchy, Michelle, and it's this project, Lake Julius Bees. That was in a Just Cross Stitch magazine. And I'm sorry, I don't know which. It's an April 2004, 2006. I can't remember. But I love bees. Like I said in my last video, we're bee people. And so I started that. 
and I'm stitching it on a 32 count piece of natural linen and that's as far as I got. So not a bad start. The thing about this is that by starting this when I get you know go back to this I can start working on the fun stuff. You know I just got a little bit more of this but then I get to do the bees and the bee skip and all of that. So that's one of the nice things about doing these kind of starts along the way is when you get back to them you get to do the fun stuff so um while i'm thinking about it i have the just cross stitch cds where you can get like the decade of magazines and if you if you watch amazon they go on sale on amazon multiple times so i've i've watched them and you can get a pretty good deal and the thing about them if you buy the ones that are like 2001 to 2010 it comes with the Christmas ornament issues and it's a bonus. So you don't have to buy an additional CD with the Christmas ornament issues. They're all in compass. It doesn't come with a Halloween. Um, but of course, I think the latest one is 2001 to 2010 and the Halloween started in 2011. But I bought the, the four to, um, Halloween issues on a CD as well. So, you know, it's not a bad deal if you watch Amazon and get it when it's on sale. All right. Day three was a carryover from 2016. I started this project and then I actually did stitch on it some over the year. Um, so I, I was close to a finish, but this is the Mad Hatter by Brooks Books Design. And I jumped on that bandwagon with a lot of other people. I just love this. Like I said in my last video, my son was um, the Mad Hatter in the school play. So he was really excited about that. And um, I'm stitching it on 32 count even weave, I believe. This is a silk weaver. My older sister and I both were in the um, silk weaver fabric of the month back in 2006, 2007. Um, got lots of really good fabrics then. Um, and we're still, still using them. And we just trade back and forth so that, you know, somebody is using the fabric. And it's not just sitting in our stash, which we still have a lot in our stash. All right. Day four was a pattern uh, carryover from 2016, and it's a, a French pattern, tourniquetom, and it is this pattern, which I can't pronounce. My friend Teresa told me how to pronounce tourniquetom, and I try to imitate her with my southern accent, um, but I'm not going to try that one. But it's a Christmas tree, and it's got all kinds of specialty stitches and those mother of pearl buttons it's going to be beautiful and it has metallics but I like primitives so I made some substitutions so here is my progress so I got most of this done this year including switching out the metallic to just a DMC it's gonna be really cute and this is a picture this plus maybe I don't know the number the name of it but it's 32 count picture this plus fabric Day five was another Brooks Books. This is the spirit of uh, Santa. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh, I have to stitch that. And bought the pattern. My son, well, the same son that was in the play this year, was in the high school play last year. And he played the, the Tin Man or the Woodsman or whatever they call it. Um, and so when I saw this, I'm like, oh, I'm going to stitch that to commemorate his first starring role. Um, he was so good. I didn't know he could sing and he actually had a singing part in the play. We were all shocked. But that's as far as I got this year, just part of the balloon. Which is better than last year because this is all I got done last year. It was just a little bit of the woodsman. I guess I turned that and the handle to his axe. So I got a long way to go, but there's a lot of a lot of parts to this. Plus there's all this memory thread and all this weird cranic stuff and I bought some of this. This is like, um, oh, I forget what it's called. It is it's essentially a string of beads. And it's pretty, but I did find some. But there's a lot of parts to that. All right, so day six was also a carryover from 2016. It's kind of disappointing. I didn't finish very many projects, but... I still got to stitch a lot of fun stuff. So this is um, Cherry Hollow Farm Sampler from Stacy Nash. I believe this is a 2015 um, release as well. It was a kit and 
I have just under half of it done. So this is a 30 count or 32 count, no, it's 36, 35 count Weeks Dye Works um, using Weeks Dye Works threads. But I just haven't made a lot of progress with this one. I stitch on it, but I just don't get very far. So probably watching a good floss tube video when I'm stitching this. This was a kit again, and I have one of these left in my Etsy store if you're interested, and I did mark them down when I bought um, the stock from Teresa. So if you're interested, a little plug for my Etsy store. It's jenstitchingniche.etsy.com. I'll put the address there. Okay. Day seven was a Chessie and Me pattern. I love Chessie and Me. I've got several of her patterns completed and several of her patterns on cue to start and this one is a little needle book and then on the inside you stitch another little panel that looks like that so cute um this is a dark fabric i don't know 36 count something but that's as far as i've gotten and again these patterns aren't all just cross stitch you'll have like smyrna crosses and things like this this little guy here is more than just crosses so you know for every stitch there you have to do the smyrna so it's instead of two legs it's four legs so but it's cute can't wait to get this finished day eight was another stacy nash i like stacy nash so stacy nash halloween jack sewing roll this is a 2010 release and it is so cute. And I stitched this on 32 count, just um, lamb's wool or raw linen. I think this is lamb's wool. And I've gotten a pretty good, you know, progress on that one. And I, this is one of those when I started stitching it. And when I was, you know, I looked at my phone to see what time it is. I'm like, oh, it's already 9 o'clock. It's, you know, I wanted to keep stitching on that. That was a fun one. So... It's just DNC 310. Um, that was a carryover from 2016. So on day nine, I finally got another new start. And it is uh, Brenda Gervais, Madam Cottontail. There she is with her little apron watering that plant. That is so cute. And look at her little tiny shoes. I just love this kind of stuff. I love her rabbits. So I'm stitching this. And I didn't get very far, but I got a little shoulder. And this is 40 count birch Weigart linen, a piece that I got in this, a stitchy box. So I can't wait to do that one. I'm going to finish it just like that. There's that little pocket. Because I'm, I'm starting to collect that felted wool. And I have my grandmother's, both of my grandmother's button box. So I've got lots of antique buttons to, to use. All right, so that was my new start, and then we moved on to day 10. Now, day 10, this is one of those that I've been stitching on this, and I've probably stitched on this seven different days. I don't know. I've stitched on it a lot. I should be finished, but it is my nemesis. I am not enjoying stitching this. This is Birds of a Feather Alphabet Sampler, and I'm stitching this on the cauliflower fabric, which is 32 count sparrow by Birds of a Feather, which is not easy to find anymore, but I have a, had a piece that's darker than this. And that may be the problem, but usually I don't mind stitching on dark fabric, but this is my progress. You can see, you get the light. That I've got the alphabet all done. I've got the border almost complete. I just need to go in and put a couple of flowers and then I have these two little pain in the butt birds. I've got one finished, and then I've just got to finish the other one. So what I've decided is this is going to be my June wine and whips. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to frame it. I'm going to hang it on some wall somewhere in my house because I'm not going to be beat by an alphabet sampler. Sampler. So but I've really struggled with that. Day 11 is a new start. It is a pattern from the Primitive Needle. And I know some people are very, you know, get very upset with the, the resale of, of these patterns online, but it is what it is. 
I was lucky enough to get several of these patterns over the years. Um, and, I mean, there are older, how do you say it? There are needlework stores around that still carry these. I know when last year when I went to, on those same kind of conference, I went to um, North Alabama and went through several different needlework stores and found several of the, of, um, the primitive needle patterns. So that's what I'm working on, and I didn't get very far. I'm stitching this on 40 count pair from Lakeside Linen. Where is it? I didn't get very far at all. There you go. This may have been the night that, was that the night? One night we had to go to my son's, um, my high school son's awards day, and we didn't get home until like midnight, and I just sat down and stitched to make sure I got my stitch mania in right before midnight. I think this was the one. So it was a new start. Day 12 is Lizzie Kate's Halloween Rules. And this has a little bit of a story to it as well. I am one of five children. There are three girls and two boys. Three women, two men, however you want to say it, because we're old. Um, but my, I have an older sister and a younger sister. I'm the middle of all five. So I'm a nerd. I love the fact that there's five of us. There's a girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, and I'm the girl middle, and I have a younger brother and younger, uh, older brother and older, how do you say it? An older sister, an older brother, a younger brother, and a younger sister. So I'm just like well patterned. But the sisters decided that we were going to do a stitch along, and we were going to do this Halloween rules. Last summer when I was out, traveling I found this fabric at one of those shops it's um 30 count weeks dye works Peoria purple and I loved it and I'm like we should do this Halloween rolls several people didn't like it and they were concerned about it but once we started stitching I think it looks great so what we were doing my younger sister likes to be she likes to organize she's actually really good at organizing so she came up with the idea that each person would stitch their own, how did she do it? So we'd stitch our own top of the border and then the first block and then the next sister would stitch the next two blocks and then we would just go down the line. So I'm stitching on my younger sister's piece right now who doesn't stitch very quickly. She's a planner. She's not a... She doesn't follow through as fast. So this is, she did this much of her border and that much of the first block. And then my older sister, Sharon, got it and she stitched Eat Candy and Visit a Haunted House. Sorry, I'm learning this. And then I got it and I'm stitching. And then on the Stitch Mania day, I stitched um, the box and a crow. So I have to stitch Scarecrow and Carve a Pumpkin before I give this back to her, which is supposed to be June 1st. We'll see. Okay. But that's my progress. I did some on that day. All right. So that's day 12. Day 13 is a carryover from 2016. I'm sorry. Lizzie Kate was a carryover from 2016 as well. Um, I had started it on a different piece and we restarted. So that's why I'm counting that as a carryover. Um, Oh, I just looked at myself. I look tired. I stayed with my parents last night. They've both been sick, and I didn't get any sleep. It's starting to show. Sorry. So Prairie Grove Peddler, I'm doing th the three pumpkins. So last year, I stitched the small one and part of the middle size one, and this year, I worked on the middle size one. So here's the small one. This is a piece of 28-count silk weaver even weave from back in the day. I just got a Turn it into a pumpkin. That's going to be cute. And then this year I worked on the, yeah, that's right, middle size. This is a piece of 30 count carrot. And I worked on this part right here. And then hopefully over the year I'll finish the larger one. So this is just a piece of 28 or 32 count scrap fabric I got from Teresa when I was helping out at her store. But I like the idea that they'll look like, they're all kind of pumpkin colors, but not all the same color. So, there you go. 
It'll be cute. All right, so that was the last carryover from 2016. That was day 14. No, day 13. The next four days, I got new starts. So I was excited. So day 14, I did Kathy Barrick, Bird's Eye View. I'm really obsessed right now with Kathy Barrick's birds. I love Cooper that was released this year. It's just so pretty and the colors. And so I'm stitching this on 40 count heritage. And that's as far as I got on Stitch Mania. But this is halfway. This is going to be a little tiny piece. And I love it. I'm like, oh, I hope all of them are going to be like this. I'm going to stitch them all and hang them as individually framed pieces, kind of in a grouping, maybe over my mantle or something. Mantle or something. It's very pretty. I really like stitching on that one. Day 15 was a new start. It is Stacy Nash again. And this is House of Berry Chapels Road, Miss Baxter's house. This was released in 2014. And I think it was a series because there's another one that's a turkey something. But this one's cute with that rooster. I like him. He's cute. So this is as far as I got. Just started on the border. And this is... um. Not the call for th um, thread. What I do is I have a lot of General Arts limited edition because every time they would come out, I would get a set of them at Teresa's store. And so I have them, a lot of them, and I need to use them. So what I've been doing this year is if I don't have a color, I pull the DMC equivalent to it and then try to match that to my limited edition so that I'm using up some of these threads. Um, I get obsessed with the idea of having all this stuff left over. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm going to use it all up. And I have a friend that's like, Jennifer, you do realize that you're not going to have just enough thread. You're going to end and have some left over, or you're going to need to go and buy some more. And I'm like, no, I'll just match something else to it. My happiest days is, I don't know if you've ever had this happen. I'm sewing with my sewing machine and just as I finish a project, I use the last of the thread. I've had that happen to me three times. It's like, look, beautiful day. I'm like, oh, I cannot believe that. So I know that does not happen very often, but three times for me it's happened. All right, off topic. Day 15 was another new start. This is, um, no, excuse me, day 16. This is Brenda Gervais, Three Black Eyed Susan. So this is for Michelle at Striped. Rose, the striped rose. I was watching her video when I started stitching on this and she pulled up a project that she was doing which is Matilda Hornbuckle which I'm also doing out of one of the Halloween um, Just Cross Stitch magazines and she was talking about how much she loved these little pumpkin head people and I'm like me too I'm stitching on one right now and that's as far as I got. So this is a 30, no this I think this is a 40 count um, cocoa from Week Style Works. I love this. This is going to be beautiful. Okay. And then my very last um, Stitch Mania project was Day 17 Thistle Stitches from Jeanette Douglas. And I love this series that she does. I've done five of them, and then I think I have like three or four other ones. Um, I buy the thread packs because I know they're expensive, but it's cheaper then trying to buy the thread yourself and they are just lovely you get to use those beautiful threads you get to do all kinds of specialty stitches and they fit if you stitch them on a 32 count they fit into an 8 by 10 frame all of them that i have done fit into an 8 by 10 frame so that's my progress and i can't wait to get back to that one that one's pretty it's on 32 count lilac linen. So that was my stitch mania. It was fun. Um, honestly, I was ready for it to end because I was trying to do that and do the, uh, excuse me, the Mill Hill stitch along and um, do my whip of the day and three day focus. So some, you know, I was stitching on four days, four different things during the day. So this is how I do my rotation because I'm a nerd. I make my list. I got this little pad of these weekly planners from Tuesday morning for like three bucks and I just listed you know there's the stitch mania three-day focus whip of the day 
I had um, the emerald stitch along day that Monday, and then um, the Mill Hill. So the, you know, Monday I had five different projects, and I got all five of them, all those checks. And then, like today, I'm supposed to be stitching on Gingerbread House from Victorian something, and then also Sleepy Hollow, which I've been working on Sleepy Hollow today. So Sleepy Hollow, the Sleepy Hollow sampler, this is one of Teresa's designs from under Raise the Roof, available through my Etsy store if you're interested. It's an older design. Let's see, 2003. And I just think it's so cute. This model stitched on Lakeside Linen's wood smoke, and I had a piece of it, and this is my progress. And I, as soon as I finish this, I think I'm going to go downstairs and sit and watch Floss Tube and see if I can finish this. I just have the little guy, the, what's his name? Headless Horseman and a little bit of the road down there to go. But it's going to be so pretty. It is fun to stitch, too. Love this one. Love the colors. Yeah. And um, I know Michelle on Bindi Stitchy was reading the copyright statement that Teresa includes. That's Teresa. She is a goofball. And, um, you know, I know she got a kick out of her, you know, don't make a copy, not even by a month. But that, that's Teresa. She has a great sense of humor. So, all right. So that's my whip of the day. Um, some of the other things I was going to show you are some of my finishes. So I've got, you can see behind me, I have this bookshelf. So last time I videotaped, I had the computer just sitting on there. And this little bookshelf just gets covered as I finish things or collect things. I put them on there. So you can say I collect La La Loopsies. I love La La Loopsies. And then I do like the little Biscorn news. I collect these soon soon things. It's, I know, whatever. But um, I just display them. And then you can see this shelf above it. I've got a couple of shelves. And I just have all kinds of these projects stacked on there. So I pulled some of them down to show you, and then I'll pull others down. Some of them are very similar to what I'm going to show you. So here are some of my FFOs. So let's see. I'll start with this one. This was from uh, 2015 release. Um, oh, what's the name? It's one of the Blackbird Design books. And let me see. I've got the book right here. Sorry, I'll be with you in just a second. Here it is, In Friendship's Way. So this is the piece right there. I'm currently working on this guy right here. But this is the book, and that's my little finish. This was so much fun. I actually went to a retreat. I, did, I was at a conference. So I go to several conferences every year. I was at a conference in Atlanta, and that was the same weekend they had the retreat in Marietta, Georgia. And um, we had a little lull in the conference, so I went up there, and I was able to get some of this exact, you know, trim that they used. And then I just got the box at Hobby Lobby, which is what they tell you to do in the book. And I was looking at this when I videotaped. I did a another version of this and messed up so I had to retake it but I found all kinds of little treasures including the little charm from last year's row by row if you're familiar with that I participated a little bit I went to about seven different stores when I was traveling and got their patterns and put together a couple of those quilt banner type things so I'll talk later about the row by row if you're not familiar with that since I pulled it out I'll show you my progress on what I'm working on in this book. So it's Welcome Dear August. So that's the pattern with the pe peacock parrot. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count. And that's my progress. So I got it turned the right way. That way. Nope. That way. But this one's been fun to stitch, too. All right. Let's 
So, I'll put that up later. Um, here's another Brenda Gervais little pin cushion, and I don't remember the name of this one, I'm sorry. But this is where I first time I actually got this off of some piece, some squash that I grew in my garden or some gourd that's actually organic, real. And I made the little pin cushion and these old antique hat pins. Teresa gave me some of them. And I made a little pin cushion. Entered that in the county fair and won a blue, not county fair, state fair and won a blue ribbon. Cute. Um, here's an, one of the um, Plum, Seeks, Plum Street Samplers little tarts. I think this was the August tart. So I just finished it and put it in a little tart pan. I go to TJ Maxx all the time, and I would buy these because they would be like $4 for a pack of six. And I don't know why, but I'm like, oh, that's so good. I'll buy those, and I'll buy another set, and I'll buy another set. So I have several of these. I cook in some of them, and then now I have a reason to have the other ones. So I've done two or three of these. So these are fun. I like them. Plus, I get to use the felted wool, which I love that stuff. Um, showed you that one. Let me get that out of the way. And then here is one. This is an old one from... Um, Blackbird Design, so 2010. It was their pin a peacock um, pin cushion, and you stitched it on that um, Weeks Dye Works gingham, and then you put it together and make a little barrel. And I love this. My niece loves this. She's two and a half, and I'm always having to get her away from it because she wants to pull all those pins out. But and then there's cat hair on it. So those are some of my finishes. Oops. Here's one here I'm hiding behind here. This is an old colonial design, um, 100 pins, um, pin cube. These look like they would be hard. They're really not. I mean, it's one over one stitching, but you just make the little six cubes or six squares, and then you just sew them onto, you lace them onto pieces of cardboard that comes with the kit, and then you just lace them together, and they come together really nicely, and you add the pins. Got a blue ribbon for that in my state fair. I love doing that. I love getting ribbons at the state fair. All right, so here are some other with of uh, FF no FOs. I haven't framed or done anything with them. This one is an old old one. It's a Mill Hill Gingerbread Village. I got this pattern when I was in graduate school at think at um in Katy, Texas. I was at graduate school at University of Houston and I've had very few days off because of my research organism was houseflies and houseflies have to be fed every day or they will die. I was doing a population genetic study and so you have to keep them alive and um every month or so I would have a day off and I'm not kidding. It was crazy how many days off a few days off I had. So, but I would go to Katy, Texas and shop their clearance cross-stitch and I would find this. And it took me probably eight years to accumulate all of the parts to do this because I was a poor graduate student. And then finally I, was, I got a little check for doing some consulting work for, um, I forget who it was, but one of the things I did with that was buy my kids Christmas and then bought the rest of the parts to do that Mill Hill and a Halloween Mill Hill. Another designer that I love to stitch a lot in the 90s was Paula Vaughn. Um, she's a Mississippi girl just like me. Well, I grew up in Mississippi, so I guess I'm a Mississippi girl. Um, and this is a pie safe. I stitched this for my mom and I didn't frame it. And I don't know why I didn't frame it. I framed so many pieces for her. But I just love the colors in this. I love those bowls. I collect these old bowls. I have my great-great-grandmother's mixing bowl and my great-grandmother's mixing bowl, which um, my great-grandmother was 18-something when she was born. I'm the My dad was the youngest of nine children, so we're like my grandfather. This is crazy. My grandfather, so I'm 46 years old. My grandfather was born in 1892. 
which seems ridiculous, but he was. My, my children were born 100 years after my grandfather, but I've, I am the child of his youngest son. So he had nine children, so he, my dad was born when he was fairly old. But it's just crazy to think that my, my grandfather, who I remember, I, you know, he lived to be 89 years old, um, was born before the turn of the last century. But um, so his, my grandmother's mother and grandmother, you know, that's in the 1890s um, when those bowls were made. And then another thing that I will have to share with you one day is all the, the rays, you know, what am I trying to say? The dough bowl craziness. I have my great grandmother on my mother's side, dough, dough bowl, and it's a big one. She used to make biscuits. We call them biscuit bowls. Um, it's about, it's literally about this big and it's shallow. And um, we always love to hear the story because the person that made that bowl for her was kind of a crazy man. And, um, you know, his, he was known for making really good biscuit bowls and for digging his old grave. I don't know. If you've ever seen the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? It's supposed to take, care, take place in Mississippi. And we love that movie. It's one of my favorites because we always joke that we know some of the people that are in that movie. Not necessarily the actual actors, but the characters are very similar to some Mississippi people we know. So, um, including the guy that made that biscuit bowl. So, maybe my next video I'll pull out those old bowls and show them um, some of my family heirlooms. All right. Um, last video, someone asked me if I liked Prairie Schooler, and I do. And um. Before I met Teresa, we did not have a uh, local needlework store in, Missis in my area of Mississippi. But there was a frame shop in Jackson, which is about two hours north of us, that had cross stitch. And we went in there one day, my sister and my friend, and I found this pattern, or this series of pattern. This is the August Samplers from Prairie Schooler. And I bought it because they had them all three stitched up and framed, you know, as a three-fold piece. I just thought it was gorgeous. So I've stitched them. And then when I finished, nobody else in my family said they wanted it. So I sold the pattern on eBay. And then Teresa's like, oh my goodness, that one's worth a lot of money. Well, it is out of print, but I think that they're going to re-release these. Because if you pay attention to Hoffman, um, who's doing the reprint, about two weeks ago, and I ordered these for my shop, they re-released the spring samplers. And I was on looking today to see if there was anything that I needed to order before I left on this trip, and they re-released the summer samplers. So they may re-release these. I know people don't like the, the thinner paper, but it's, you know, paying for the thinner paper from a, a needlework store is probably going to be cheaper than trying to find them on eBay so all right another finish is Lizzie Kate's Halloween mystery sampler I stitched this I finished this this was the first finish in my new house we built this house back in 2013 and moved into it and I can remember sitting in our brand new living room finishing up this little pumpkin head cat right there so cute I love Lizzie Kate's Halloween stuff I love Halloween projects. I've got a whole bunch of them. Here's another one. Primitive Needle Voodoo Alphabet Sampler. That's on a piece of 40 count. Weak Style Works something. McKenna from Every Stitch Count. She finished this one. This is Remember Me by Birds of a Feather. And this is on some piece of Solo Dye Silk Weaver that I had. And I love it. I love those little houses. I really want the frame that this was originally supposed to be framed in, but you can't find that. And here's another one. This is a Stacy Nash. This is Christmas time at Hollyberry Farms. I love this piece. It is so beautiful. This is stitched on 40 count, probably light exemplar or something like that. But that border is gorgeous. And I finished this thankfully, or thanks to Teresa for challenging me, because she's like, let's see if we can stitch it fastest. And she stitches like the wind. 
when we get together, you know, on the old cooking shows where they would start a, a recipe and they put it in the oven and they pull it out, completed in the of the, of the other oven. That's how Teresa stitches. She's like, stitch, and here it is finished. So when I beat her on stitching that, I was so proud of myself. Oh, I'm very competitive. So she knew what she was doing. Here's another one of those that's hard to find. Everybody's wanting the, and I finished it years ago. Competition, my friend Lisha and I were stitching this. I think she beat me on this one though. But it's Tiger Lily stitched on a piece of 32 count. I think this is lakeside linen. It feels like it. It may be silk weaver, but so pretty. These are all out of a bag of um, that I had pulled things that I was going to go get frames for. I just need to get to our little frame shop, which we get good deals on frames. And this is a Blackbird Designs Easter Parade. I've seen this on multiple floss tube videos lately. Again, stitched on 36 count old silk weaver. And here's some Halloween, I mean, excuse me, Halloween, Christmas. This is Jeannie Bean Christmas Sampler from Teresa. This was so much fun to stitch. I think this is on 40 count pearl barley. Love that border right there. Love that. So pretty. And then this is a Blackbird design. This came out of their Blueberry Crumb Cake. I can't, I don't remember if that's the name, but it, they, they used that um, series of fabrics in that book. And this is called Morning Read. I love this one. Those have all got to be framed. Um, actually, underneath that, I had some more finishes, the FFO. So, I don't know. Did I just show you this? Anyway, if I haven't, here's another pumpkin head. Now, this is a Birds of a Feather, Poor Jack. It did have more to it, but I didn't like all of the extra, so I just, when I got to this point, I stopped and finished it. I have an oval mat cutter, so I was able to cut this pretty well. I still need to work on my finishing, but, and Cute Fabric, Teresa gave me that. Here's another finish. This is Beehive something. I don't know the name. It's an older pattern. But this is stitched over one. Well, not all of it. The peacock is, and these flowers are. And I do not like stitching over one. But I finished that, and I try to stuff the pillow like Fauna says to stuff the pillow. I'm still working on it, Fauna. I'm working on it. But I did use that Mountain Mist um, Fiber fill, that stuff is the bomb. And I love punch needles. So here's another piece. This is, you punch, you, know, you look at this, they're not all at the same ply, or what do you say, pile. Um, so it gives more dimension. But this was um, Threads That Bind is the designer. And I, buy these, I bought this kit from Silver Needle, and it's a little pouch. I didn't do the best job of finishing it, but I got a red ribbon from the State Fair. You can see, let me see, all that yellow on that doorknob, that's a bunch of ribbons. I, I'm obsessed with getting ribbons at our State Fair. We do not get the best ribbons in Mississippi, but I want to get the most ribbons because all you get are ribbons, and if you get the most ribbons, you get a, you know, a, a little extra prize, but, um, I keep thinking of all the things I want to enter in the state fair. My sister-in-law makes fun of me because I'm, I'm a bit obsessive. But let's see. There's two frame pieces I wanted to share with you at the end. And these are um, some of Teresa's patterns. This is Jane Pattison, which is probably my second favorite of hers. I loved stitching this. This was stitched in wool. This is my favorite part right there. So this is a reproduction sampler, Jane Pattison, and I'm going to frame this, but well, excuse me, I've framed it already, I know. I'm stitching Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs, and I think they match. I'm, I think I'm going to frame them and display them next to each other. I just think that this is so pretty. Got crowns for people who like crowns. It's got these little motifs on the outside of the border. 
This was just a pretty one. And then my last piece I'm going to share with you is another one of Teresa's that has a funny story to me that I've made up. This is Elizabeth Milner. It is a reproduction sampler, and the age of this young lady was 12 years when she stitched this. And if you look at it, she didn't really pay attention. So let's see over here. You see, she did the border, and Teresa charted it just like it was stitched, and it didn't match up, and she just didn't care. So what makes me happy about this, other than it was just fun to stitch and it's pretty colors, so my sister-in-law was looking at it, and she started talking about the fact that back in the day that, you know, young women were judged by their, their needlework as to their quality as a wife. And she said that some of these young ladies would stitch a pretty pattern or a pretty sampler, and then they would have their backup sampler. Because if somebody was coming over that they were not interested in as a spouse, this is the one that would go up on the wall. So they would say, oh my goodness, this young lady doesn't even pay attention. She probably won't make a good wife and they'd leave. So I'm like, that is so funny if that's true, that they had a backup plan to kind of ward off bad matches by using their poorly, intentionally poorly stitched samplers. I don't know if that's true, but to me, that's hilarious. Got another blue ribbon. So... But, so those are some of my whips and FFOs and FOs and Stitch Mania. Um, I've got lots of others to show you. Like I said, I have 119 whips. So you saw, what was that, 17 plus 2, 19 of them today. So you still have 100 to go. And I haven't even pulled out the box of, of finished. And I haven't shown you the pieces from downstairs or all these other ones hanging up on my wall. So I've got lots to share. Um, you can see I did get a little caught up in the needle minder craze last year when I started watching floss tube, but I don't use needle minders that much, but I do collect them. Most of those I actually made myself. And um, then I ordered some as well, but they're fun and it's cute display back there. Um, but again, those of you that are watching and coming back to watch again. Thank you. I enjoy watching everybody's videos. I enjoy reading everybody's comments. Um, just if you're, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll be gone again for about, I'm going to leave on the 23rd. I'll be back on the 2nd. My store will be closed during that time, but um, I will try to get a video as soon as possible um, recorded when I get back because I'm going to be taking whips with me and stitching at night after driving because I am doing a lot of driving over the next week and a half. But again, thank you and um, have fun with your stitching and I'll see you soon. Thanks.